So unfortunately, when you're using Next Auth with a JDBT strategy, they don't really have built-in refresh token capabilities, which is kind of a bummer because having a refresh capability is kind of necessary to have a more secure system. So I'm going to walk you through my approach. I tried to implement a refresh token myself. This probably isn't perfect, so let me know if there's something that I'm doing that you might think was bad. Also, leave a link to another repo that I can kind of learn from if someone already has this implemented in their own project. So in next auth, you have this callbacks property that you can attach to your auth config, and you can specify what happens when someone logs in. So in my case, when someone logs in, this user property will be uh, defined. And I'm basically attaching some things to the existing token. So for example, you see here, I'm saying token.refresh token is equal to obtain refresh token use case. And then additionally, I'm attaching an expires at which I use later on. And so how this works is the first time a user logs in, uh, this is going to insert a record into a refresh token table that I manually created. So let's just try this out. I'm going to log out real quick and then log back in. Okay, let's just refresh this table. And now I have a token. This is basically my refresh token and it tells us when this token is going to be invalid. So in about 10 days, this refresh token will expire, but there is a token, a UID here, that you can use to basically refresh your access token. All right, so let's just take a peek at the code. So when I first logged in, it's going to call this method obtain refresh token. And this is just calling like a database command to basically first fetch the existing refresh token if it exists. If it doesn't, I go ahead and create one with about a 10 day time to live. So I basically just like take today's date. I click on this, I take today's dot now, I add 10 days to it. I create a date timestamp and I persist that to my database. So if I go to my schema, you'll see I have a refresh tokens table and that has an expires column here that takes in a timestamp of mode date. Also, we got a token here, right? This is a randomly generated UID, which is necessary Later on, when we do requests, we want to look up this refresh token to see, hey, if my token's expired, if my access token's expired, we're going to use that refresh token that I'm storing in the database to kind of give them a new access token. So here is just going to return and give us a new token. But if we already have a token in the system, I just go ahead and extend it because someone logged in with Google properly, which means that they have access to this like account, right? And so I basically just extend the existing refresh token. The reason I'm doing this is because like, your database will just keep on adding more and more and more refresh tokens. And I kind of just wanted to like share the same refresh token so that if I ever want to nullify or cancel out someone's session, all I need to do is go into the, the refresh table and delete it. One thing I want to point out is that the refresh token has an expiration timestamp on it for 10 days, but the actual access token, I have a expiration time of 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, this access token, which is basically what this entire application is using, to check if you have a session available. Down here, I basically set an expires at on the token. I set it for 10 minutes. And then later on, every time you hit an endpoint or a page, it's gonna call this JDBT method, and it's just gonna take this code path. So basically we check the token, we say, hey, is this token still valid? Has it expired? No, okay, let's just go ahead and use that token. Otherwise, a token has expired, we have to check to see if we have a refresh token in our database. And so I go ahead and do a query against the database and get it. If there is no refresh token, so I basically just throw an error in the front end, shows an error screen, and then they have to re-log in if they want to get a fresh usable token. Second thing, if there is a refresh token in the database, I need to make sure that that token hasn't expired yet. So I go ahead and just compare today's date against the expires property on that refresh token. And if it is greater than the refresh expires time, I go ahead and throw another error here saying refresh token expired. If everything is good with the refresh token, all I do is I create a new token using the existing token and I set a new expires at timestamp, all right? And so again, this is just today's timestamp plus in minutes. And then I send that back. And then that's what I send back over here. It's a brand new token that has a longer um, expiration time. So basically it just keeps on refreshing that access token over and over again. Anytime that you hit one of my endpoints with a, a stale token. So the benefit of this is basically if someone's token gets compromised, you can come in here and you can delete their refresh token, which means that they would have to log in again manually to get that refresh token back. Now there is a delay, right? Again, the access token has 10 minutes, so they can do whatever they want with your system for up to 10 minutes. But after that 10 minutes expires, 
it's going to go ahead and try to you know do that revalidation check it's going to see that there is no refresh token in the database and it's just going to log them out i'm going to change this to five seconds all right and then that should refresh i do have to log out and log back in because i need to get a fresh token all right so let's go ahead and check this out so again every five seconds when i do a request to my api it's going to say hey your access token's invalid and then it goes and it checks my database it refreshes and gives me a brand new access token every five seconds. All right, so let's just go ahead and go to here. I'm going to delete this refresh token. And then I'm going to at least wait five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. And then hopefully, let me go ahead and just load up my terminal. If I were to click on some authenticated page, so let's click on settings. Notice that it says you must be logged in to view this content. And this is like a, I have a, a suspense error boundary here, but if I click on members, it actually just kicks me off of this entire thing. And it says, oh, something went wrong, you're unauthorized. And I do need to come in and add some more like buttons here to make it look nicer. But basically the fact is, if that user's token got compromised, I can just delete the refresh token. And the only way they're gonna be able to refresh that compromised token after those 10 minutes is they're gonna have to come back in and sign in. Now with this approach, there's something that I'm not really a fan of, and that's basically the refresh token and the access token are combined, which not the best in terms of security, because if you leak the access token, someone can just keep on refreshing it over and over and over again. But this is a added benefit because again, like I just showed you, you can come in here and you can invalidate anyone's refresh token, which means they only get 10 minutes to do what they want with that access token and then they're gonna get kicked out of the system. But honestly, the more you think about this, they say the safest place to store a refresh token is in an HTTP only cookie. And the access token is also gonna be in a cookie. So if someone's able to get your access token, they're more than likely gonna be able to get your refresh token, right? If you've somehow you've compromised your access token, why wouldn't they be able to get your refresh token as well? And then it's, this is more especially true with a non like single page application type of setup. Um, for a server side rendered setup, it's a little bit different, I think. So you can't just like store the token somewhere. Cool. So that is all I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this little overview of how I set up refresh tokens. Again, this will be included in my starter kit. And so if you want to kind of take a peek at this code and use it in your own applications, you can do so. You can go ahead and sign up for the newsletter. And when the starter kit is ready, uh, you can go ahead and purchase it. All right. That's all I want to share with you all. Have a good day. Happy coding.